Hello, my name is Dhruv Bhanushali and this is my presentation on convolution and its applications in image processing. So without further ado, let's get straight to it. A good way to start would be to formally define some of the terms that are used in the later part of the presentation. So we'll go over some definitions first and then we'll use them in practical applications. The first term that we'll formally define is an image. We use the word image a lot, but never truly in a technical sense. So in a technical sense, an image is just a two dimensional array of colors represented by various combinations of red, green and blue. The intensity of each component is typically a number between 0 and 255 equivalent to 0 and FF on the hexadecimal scale. By varying the intensity of these components, one can generate virtually millions of colors. For example, red is defined by RGB 255-00 and white is defined by RGB 255-255-255. But how does an image like that get displayed on a screen? To put it simply, every screen has a two-dimensional array of pixels with each pixel consisting of three dots one for each of the colors red, green and blue. When an image is rendered, every pixel lights up according to the intensity specified in the image file. Thus the screen displays a matrix of colors which we perceive as an image. The next definition is for the not so well known term kernel. In image processing terms, a kernel is a square matrix of spatial weights assigned to the neighborhood of a pixel when an image is being processed. Every image processing operation is identified by a characteristic kernel. For example, the kernel for box blur is 1 over 9, 111111111. We will see exactly how a kernel is applied on an image in the coming slides, but for now it is important to know what a kernel is so that later on we can better understand what a kernel actually does. So popularly known kernels are the kernels for box blur, Gaussian blur, identity and sharpen. Box blur is identified by the kernel 1 over 9 and a 3 cross 3 matrix of 1s. Whereas Gaussian blur is identified by 1 over 16 1 to 1, 2 for 2 and 1 to 1. So when we look closely we see that Gaussian blur and box blur are very similar except for the fact that Gaussian blur lays more weight on the pixels that are directly adjacent such as those on the top and bottom left and right as compared to those on the diagonal whereas box blur puts an equal emphasis on all the surrounding pixels. Uh, on the right side we have the identity kernel which does nothing other than return the same input image as it is and then we have sharpen which increases the contrast of the current pixel compared to the surrounding pixels by enhancing the current pixel with respect to its neighborhood. The last definition that we ought to know before starting off our exploration is that of convolution. Convolution in image processing involves laying a matrix over another and then calculating the weighted sum of all pixel values. So consider this example here. On the left we have an image which is presumably a grayscale image where all these numbers are basically vibrance values of the pixels. The right matrix is that of a kernel which is 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 in this case. When we are convoluting this image at the central pixel which is 3, 3 with this kernel, what we do is we place the kernel with its center at 3, 3. Then we map the cells of the image with the corresponding weights in the kernel. So 40 gets mapped to 0, 42 gets mapped to 1 and 46 gets mapped to 0. 
in a similar fashion we map all the cells of the image with their weights on the kernel and then we calculate the sum which in this case turns out to be 42 because all other weights are 0 so in effect what this does is it just moves this image down by one pixel this is the shift kernel in action but what happens on the edges and vertices for example consider a 3 cross 3 matrix abc def ghi if we try to convolute this matrix on any of the corner cells that is any cell other than e we run into a problem because their neighborhood is not defined well so for cells along the border we create a pseudo border by cloning the edges and vertices outwards and we use this neighborhood for all our calculations after our convolution operation is done we can safely delete this imaginary border and uh, reduce the image back into its original resolution so with that we are clear with the definitions we now know what those terms mean so let's put them into use and do some actual image processing but before we see how we do image processing we need to know what is image processing images are basically just data and it's as easy to manipulate images as it is to manipulate data so image processing is simply a method that we use to either extract some information from an image or to insert some information into it a very common reason to process images would be to make them more aesthetic and or to correct some blemishes that may have creeped into the image so at the very core image processing via filters is simply the convolution of a kernel with an image that is given to the convolutor as an input and the output image that we receive can either be passed through more layers of convolution or it could be read as the direct output everything other than this is just layers of abstraction at the very core image processing via filters is nothing but convolution so it is very understandable if that did not make a lot of sense let's explore some examples to get a better understanding of the concept which is after all the best way to learn something new let's go through some examples to clarify this new concept the first filter that we are seeing here is the monochromatic gaussian blur uh, for understanding this we take a sample image consisting of a 5 cross 5 grid of white pixels and in the center we have a 3 cross 3 grid of black pixels the grid above shows the vibrance of various pixels which is 0 for black and 100 for white when we pass this image through a Gaussian blur kernel which is 1 over 16th of 1 to 1, 2 for 2 and 1 to 1 we get the output which looks like the image on the right and the vibrance values of this image are shown in the grid at the bottom as you can see here the vibrance of no pixel is 100 anymore because the black from the central grid has creeped out and affected all the white surrounding pixels this is because the black grid which was earlier focused has now become defocused by blurring we see that only the central pixel is unaffected it remains zero as it was before because it was surrounded by all the same pixels pixels like itself so the convolution did not affect it as much as it affected all the other pixels as you can see the darkness 
is maximum at the center and gradually fades as we move outwards and this goes on to show that Gaussian blur actually diffused the sharply focused grid. The next filter that we have is the box blur. For box blur we are taking on a different example compared to the one we took for the Gaussian blur. In this case we are taking an image consisting of RGB values. So we took a pink box which is generated by R equal to 255, G equal to 0 and P equal to 255 surrounded by white cells. So again this is a 5 cross 5 grid consisting of a 3 cross 3 pink box surrounded by a 1 pixel white border. When we convolute this image with the box blur matrix which is 1 over 9 one 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 one. We get the image which looks like the image on the right, and the variance and the values of RGB are given at the bottom grid. So again, we can see that the results are quite similar to that of the Gaussian blur. We have no white pixel left because of the diffusion of the pink square. We have a pink square at the center, which is exactly the same as it was earlier with no change because its surroundings are the same as itself. All other pinks have become less intense and the intensity of pink fades as we move outwards because of the increase in the effect of white cells. But what you observe here different from the Gaussian blur is that the diffusion is quite uniform and not as steep as that of the Gaussian blur. This is because box blur lays an equal emphasis on all surrounding pixels compared to the Gaussian blur which lays more emphasis on directly adjacent pixels. But the, the output is more or less the same. Then we have edge detection. Edge detection basically works by subtracting the color of all neighborhood elements from the given pixel. So what it actually does is it multiplies the central pixel by 8 then subtracts the values of all the 8 surrounding pixels. So what this actually results in doing is if the image is continuous the output of this operation comes out to be a 0 and it's not so at the boundaries where the color changes drastically. So the output image comes out to be gray in all continuous areas with discontinuities in the form of color and lines appearing at the edges. So considering this image of the Taj Mahal, we see that the output image shows a lot of gray with white and black colored lines appearing at the boundaries of various objects. To perform experiments like these, you can obtain GIMP, which is the GNU image manipulation program from https colon forward slash forward slash www.gimp.org forward slash. GIMP is free and open source software, which you can install on your PCs given that they are running either Windows or Linux and you can perform experiments like these using GIMP. It's very easy to perform these operations because GIMP has a built-in module for specifying the convolution matrices and applying it to images. The other kernels apart from the ones we did discuss are the ones that are shown in this image. Here we have the lesser accurate edge detection kernels and then we have the sharpen kernel, we have the unsharp masking. These are a bit too complicated to cover in this presentation but if you do install GIMP trying any of these is hardly any difficult. All you have to do is specify the matrix and GIMP will do the rest. As you can see uh, the output of various 
kernel is shown in this figure so the final part of the presentation is how any of this applies in the real world so image processing has many real world applications the most fundamental of which would be the camera upon your mobile phone so when you take a photo with your mobile phone camera what actually happens is that sen the sensors capture a lot of noise so software is used to smoothen out this image and to make the noise appear very smooth and the image to appear balanced on top of that many people apply instagram filters and snapchat masks onto their images these also use techniques such as face recognition object recognition to enhance the visual appeal of the images and with the rise of computer vision the field of recognition in the objects and faces is bound to grow so the use of filters such as edge detection becomes more and more important with that i would like to conclude my presentation uh, that's it that was me dhruv bhanushali speaking on convolution thank you